May 4th, 1995. Oklahoma City police are looking for two what they call Middle Eastern men in connection with the bombing of the federal building. This particular morning. bombing probably has roots in the Middle Radical East. Radical Islamic extremists These, uh, on American soil to be the bomb. number one domestic. They're often the first we think of when there's a terrorist incident. They expect us to probably have guns and have masks on. To bow down again like this. They're the unknown, the growing, the stereotype religion here in the United States. We're as American as apple pie. We are Americans. We are Americans. Tonight, Muslims in America, the misunderstood millions. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. A bombing attack on a federal building in a place like Oklahoma City was about the last thing we had in mind when we assigned this story. This was to be a continuation of an occasional series that we do on Nightline, focusing on some of the lesser-known religions here in the United States. In months past, we have introduced many of our viewers to the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, to an Orthodox Jewish group known as the Lubavitchers. And in that spirit, we wanted to do a program on one of the fastest growing religions in America, a group which in the next decade or so is expected to surpass the number of Jews in this country. We wanted to do a program on American Muslims. If the subject of terrorism had come up at all in the context of that program, it would have only been to point out how unfair it is that terrorism and Islam are so often connected in the American mind. No doubt, this program, which has its roots in the story of Americans held hostage by Islamic fundamentalists in Iran, helped create that mindset. Terrorism has been an all-too-frequent tool of Islamic fundamentalists, which led a lot of Americans to jump to the wrong conclusion when we first heard the news from Oklahoma City. But even had it been so, why should any person, American or otherwise, be judged by the standard of his most fanatical co-religionist. Federal building on 5th is going to be your main target. You have uh, half of the building collapsed all the way from the roof down. It is natural, perhaps, that when we see images like these, we are so angry, so frustrated, so vulnerable. This, we realize, could have been one of ours. I'm at 4th and Harvey. I need a hospital. I've got... You know, I'm a mother, so to see the children coming out with blood all over their faces and the parents just holding on to their children so tight, especially, the, you know, the toddlers and the babies, it's, I mean, it's tragic. And when it happens in Oklahoma City, we realize that the terror truly could strike anywhere. Here, for example, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Just the sight of the devastation is has is, is really brought us all, um, I think, given us all a sense of helplessness and shock. What we weren't so quick to realize was how many of our fellow Americans in a place like Cedar Rapids would feel a tightening of the gut at the accusations that were bound to follow. Every time we hear of a terrorist act, we cringe because we think that they're going to point the finger at some Islamic group from, for whatever this group did overseas or anywhere else. Uh, Which, of course is exactly what happened. Local police and the FBI had issued the all points bulletin looking for three men believed to be of Middle Eastern origin. And the likelihood that it'd be uh, from the Middle East is probably uh, much greater than from any, any place else. They apparently did not speak with accents, with Middle Eastern accents. There is an assumption though, there's still a possibility that there could have been some sort of connection to Middle East terrorism. Nor was the national media alone in its hurtful assumptions. Joe Ozzie is a second-generation American Muslim. And there it was again in the local Cedar Rapids paper. I was totally disgusted at the, uh, at the idea that uh, right off the bat, without any uh, in-depth uh, looking, uh, they're pointing out Islamic militants, whatever that's supposed to mean. Within 24 hours, the Islamic center of Cedar Rapids was receiving telephone threats. Uh, one of them to say, we'll get you for that bombing in Oklahoma. 
and the other one said, go back to your damn country, something like that. President Clinton, to his everlasting credit, sounded a voice of reason. This is not a question of anybody's country of origin. This is not a question of anybody's religion. In normal times, most of us take pride in the fact that this is a nation of hyphenated Americans. But American Muslims, like businessman Hassan Igram, feels himself measured by a different standard. We're not any different than anybody else, than an Irish American or a Polish American or a Chinese American or Vietnamese American. Um, we all basically have um, come from, our heritage comes from another part of the world. The oldest Muslim communities in America are in fact in places like Cedar Rapids and Quincy, Massachusetts. And we're not aware of that. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, it turns out, is home to the oldest mosque in America, built by families like the Igrams and the Aussies, whose forefathers and mothers came to the Midwest from the Middle East nearly a hundred years ago. Dentist Mo Igram's parents were among them. There were several families in Cedar Rapids at the time that established a uh, house of worship and a social hall. Also, it was used for uh, Arabic school and religious school for us. Cedar Rapids Muslim community has grown and prospered and put down its own unique roots. It has outgrown the old Islamic center and constructed a new one, which is the focal point of the community. Allahu Akbar. Especially during religious festivals like Eid, which comes at the end of the observance of Ramadan, Allah. when for a month, Devout Muslims consume neither food nor drink during daylight hours. Fasting is prescribed for you. There is nothing alien, after all, about prayer services or Sunday school. Nor could anything be more American than a potluck brunch. Just because some people treat us as Muslim fundamentalists or give us a hard time. The concerns of American Muslims, says Sunday school teacher Tima Schmeichel, are the concerns of American Christians and Jews. We do talk a lot about um, the uh, effects of alcohol and drugs because of, of the society that the children are in right now. Not just Muslim children, all children. Our society right now is just a little crazy and we really do need to get back to uh, taking a look at our, our morals and we really need to get back and get things straightened out. I don't think that a values that a Muslim espouses as being important in raising their family are any different than, than anybody else. What happened, Tari? They are concerned, in a phrase, about family values. Lila Igram, a third-generation American Muslim, has been hearing about such things all her life. The strict rules are things that a person would just, you would not do things if you're just following your common sense. Um, so those kinds of things aren't hard to stay away with, uh, away from for several people. Um, for instance, alcohol, drugs, um, premarital, premarital sex. If that sounds more like us than them, it may just be that most Americans don't know much about Islam. They don't have the sense that Muslims are us, part and part of our society, and indeed part and part and parcel of the religious tradition, that in fact we are talking about a Judeo-Christian Islamic tradition. But for all their deep American roots, the Muslims of Cedar Rapids were still made to feel like aliens when the bomb went off in Oklahoma City. So to hear all of these accusations, then to, they pop up with the, you know, the two white male suspects. I mean, the, the injury was already done. Like all American minorities, Muslims recognize How about that they will have to make their own case. They have to get up and do the same thing the Jews did. They have to get up and do the same thing that any minority group who had to win their rights have to do. When we come back, we'll be joined by John Esposito, who in the wake of the Oklahoma bombing has tried to bridge the gap between Muslims and other Americans. This is ABC News Nightline. Joining us now in our Washington Bureau, John Esposito, the director of the Center for Muslim Christian Understanding at Georgetown University. I take it that, that what happened in Cedar Rapids 
happened around the rest of the country, too. There was this rush to judgment, right? Yes, that was the kind of response that one received. I had uh, phone calls from newspaper outlets and, and radio and TV programs, I would say, from uh, across the country. Based on what do you think? Well, I think that there's um, uh, a gut reaction uh, in light of the past. Uh, when one hears terrorism, to equate it with, unfortunately, with Islam and Muslims more often than not. Why do you think it is that, that as a nation we are so ignorant about, and I, I understand the numbers vary, or at least the estimates of how many Muslims there are in America uh, vary greatly, but certainly well over a million, maybe as high as four or five million. Why do you think we're so ignorant about the religion? Well, I think that uh, basically we came into the situation with uh, a sense of, of ignorance about Islam in the Muslim world in the 70s because we weren't aware of the region. We didn't know or feel there were that many Muslims uh, among us, whereas uh, being basically Judeo-Christian in background, we were much more concerned with that part of the world and then became traumatized by the Iranian Revolution and the image of Americans held hostage, the slaying of Anwar Sadat. And against a background of ignorance, we generalized from one or two incidents about a vast religion and group of people in a way that we don't do with regard to, let's say, Judaism or Christianity. Before we go back and, and listen to some of the people from Cedar Rapids, some of the, the Muslim residents of Cedar Rapids, tell us a little about themselves and about their faith, I wonder if you would spell out for us what the great similarities are between uh, Judaism and, and Christianity and the Muslim faith and also where the differences lie. Well, I think that uh, there are remarkable uh, similarities. That is, Muslims like Jews and Christians worship the one God. Uh, they recognize a line of, of prophets from Adam and Abraham to Moses and Jesus. Uh, they believe that revelation came to Moses, to Jesus, and then one final time to the prophet Muhammad. Uh, they believe in ethical responsibility and accountability and that you'll be judged on that and, and either uh, have eternal reward in heaven or uh, eternal uh, punishment uh, in hell. So there are uh, really, uh, all three are very much children of Abraham, see themselves as descendants from Abraham, and people of the book have a scripture. Do Muslims believe that someday there will be a Messiah, or do they regard Muhammad as being the Messiah? Muhammad is the final prophet, um, and I think that that's the best way uh, to see it. Uh, he's one of a long line of prophets, but he is the final prophet who has brought the final revelation in, what it, in, in the Holy Quran. And does that ultimately lead to an apocalypse or ultimately lead to a day of judgment? Uh, what, what lies at the end of the road for a Muslim? It's the day of judgment. Uh, that it, it's, it's, it's uh, very uh, similar in many ways uh, to the belief of, of many Jews and Christians that, that in the end there will be a day of judgment when all will uh, come before God and uh, will receive, uh, as I said, eternal reward, uh, reward or punishment. Let me bring you back just for one moment to, to the events of Oklahoma City. Uh, do you think the national embarrassment at having jumped to the wrong conclusion here is sufficient that it may actually lead not only to a little more tolerance but a little more understanding? I hope so. I mean, one would like to think that having uh, jumped the gun and made a mistake that that will happen, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I find that the, the, the sort of forces of the stereotyping of, of the past are still very much in place. I mean, for example, the other day I saw a, a leading journalist interviewed after the incident, and the best that he could do is blame uh, the TV, blame television, but he basically said it was a logical conclusion. In fact, uh, these people could still be behind the right-wing American militias. and. If that mentality is out there, um, that, that makes me a bit nervous. Mr. Esposito, thanks very much indeed. When we come back, we'll return to the Muslims of Cedar Rapids, who they are in their own words. <laughs> Who then are Muslim Americans and how do they differ from their stereotypes? We'll let them speak for themselves. The perception of uh, Muslims in this country is, uh, to me, one of the things is that the Muslims are terrorists, that they're warmongers. Where you hear of particular Muslims that uh, cause some kind of problems. Uh, that's not Islam, that's not the faith that's causing those problems, it's, it's people that claim to be Muslims, and maybe they are Muslims. We felt terrible when there was the bombing in the World Trade Center in New York. 
we have this um, program in our school called Channel One, and if they have a report about that, the kids they'll start snickering, and while I'm sitting at my desk or something, they'll start talking about, "Oh, look at that crazy terrorist" or something like that, and it's just embarrassing for me and shameful. There's no such thing as one Muslim mind. Okay, you have different Islamic societies all over the world with different agendas, different uh, social backgrounds, economic backgrounds, different political backgrounds and ideologies. So therefore you have um, Muslims doing different things all over the world. It seems like it's getting more and more difficult for our children to not be looked at as, oh, you're one of those. If they tell me it to my face, then I'll try to explain to them that I'm not like that, like I'm not going to bring a bond to my school or something. The common idea, or the, the reality that um, the three Western faiths have the same basic base to them, uh, Adam, Abraham, uh, Moses, and Jesus, uh, these are common to all three of these faiths. We believe in the God that they do, that Allah is just an Arabic word for God. We believe in only one God, and that's Allah, not Muhammad, because he was just a prophet, but many people mistake him as being a pro as God, as our God. We want people to know that Muslims are, are peaceful people, and that uh, Islam means, means peace. Muslim is one who submits to God. It's not a follower of anybody. It's not a racial thing. It's just one who submits to God. That's what a Muslim is. I don't need a, a, a priest or a, a minister. Um, I can practice it on my own. Uh, I'm responsible for my own actions. No one else can forgive me except uh, the Almighty. The uh, commandments in Islam are like the ones in Christianity. Treat your neighbor right and, uh, you know, work hard in this life and do good for people. And what else is there? Islam teaches us that men and women are created of the same essence. Okay, we, you know, in the Quran it says we have created you from a male and a female. There is no doubt that the way Islam is practiced in, uh, in the traditional world that it's very patriarchal and that uh, uh, that has a tendency to give you the idea that women uh, are second-class citizens. There's this misconception uh, that women in Islam have to be covered from head to toe and not leave the home, to stay in the home and to care for the children and to not get an education. There's a lot of re reasons for a woman covering her hair and covering herself uh, with modesty, as there are for men. It applies to men also. I won't wear a scarf, but I won't wear a bikini either. So, therefore, um, you know, I, like, I try to stay in the middle. My husband doesn't go to the beach either. Like, he won't wear a swimsuit like that either. There's a concept uh, of veil. And veil is the covering of the majestic. And so one of the traditional ideas behind a veiled woman was beauty. They do it for reasons of, say, um, a rebellion against uh, a society that deems them as, like, physical be almost solely physical beings. I think the world's got to know that uh, Muslim does not mean Arab, and uh, that their uh, Arabs are maybe uh, a minority in the Muslim world today. There are American there are Anglo Muslims, there are Chinese Muslims, there are Indonesian Muslims, there are African Muslims from all over Africa, Muslims, English Muslims. The question becomes at this point, what does a Muslim look like? Okay. Well, what does a Christian look like? What does a Jew look like? What's a Hindu look like? I'm sure if I'm walking through the mall, there's going to be tons of people not thinking, thinking that I'm not a Muslim. I mean, I doubt they're going to be able to tell because I'm not going to be, like, dressing in a robe or something to the mob. You know, you hear people like Newt Gingrich saying this is a Christian country. Well, this isn't a Christian country. This is a country 
that's free and open. It's for whatever religion you want to believe in. I'm an American, and practicing Islam in this country to me is a privilege because we're allowed as Muslims to practice our faith like any other faith. And we can say what we want, practice the way we practice, pray, um, and do it with total freedom and security. Judging from what I've seen out there in the, some of the Middle Eastern countries, I'd say, I'd say it's easier to be a Muslim in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. If there were a true Islamic country, I mean, I would think that Muslims would be flocking to get there. There isn't. Uh, America seems to be the closest thing, actually. Members of the oldest Muslim community in America in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'll be back with a note about our Friday night special in just a moment. We hope you'll join us tomorrow for a Nightline Friday Night Special. Another look at the Waco tragedy, which is widely believed to have motivated the Oklahoma City bombers. We will show you never-before-broadcast videotapes, which may shed some light on how that fire actually started. And tomorrow on Good Morning America, the German response as the 50th anniversary of VE Day draws near. And that's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News... Good night. For information about Nightline on America Online, call 1-800-772-4222. For Nightline transcripts, call 1-800-ALL-NEWS. a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.